In the last lecture, I asked you to start re revising your outline in reference to these, these principles of, of arrangement, simplicity, balance, and order. And, and what we're going to be doing here is thinking more specifically about developing your support, developing the details. Um, so you've kind of got a framework now that you're working with. So the question is, what's going on in those subpoints, on those levels of meaning? And typically, I want to be able to anchor each point with some type of detail. Now, that might be a piece of evidence. It might not be a piece of evidence. But some, some nitty-gritty aspect of the concept, where I'm getting to the, the finest grained analysis of whatever I'm talking about. So again, I kind of like this idea. And we'll talk about this next time, of sort of moving from the general concept into the specific details and then telescoping back out again. So in the next lecture, we're going to be talking about performing those levels of meaning, your main idea, your sub-idea, your level of detail. And um, you know, one thing I, could, I, I hadn't thought about up until this point, but I think might be a useful way of thinking about how the impromptu structure relates to the informative structure. I used to sort of think that in talking about it, the impromptu, the, the difference between the informative and the impromptu was we added a layer to the impromptu. And that's actually not accurate, uh, the more I think about it. What's happening in the informative is you're running basically three short impromptus all on the same theme, right? So those subpoints were kind of what you were doing in your impromptu speech, right? Because you've got that claim and evidence. Now we're taking multiple little you know, impromptus and putting them together and saying, These are, this is a main idea. Here are two more little impromptus. This is a main idea. Here's another couple of them. This is a main idea. So we're doing a lot of what we're developing, what we've been doing in that impromptu speech. But so let's talk to a little bit more deliberately what some of these details are that are going to anchor your subpoints, that are going to be that, that finest level of analysis that you're doing in your informative speech. So in this video lecture, I kind of want to talk to types of evidence, what type of evidence to include, and then a last note on making sure that you're keeping the evidence in a supporting role. Okay? So let's begin by talking about the di different types of detail or types of evidence. Well, certainly we can distinguish between facts and statistics, testimony, and examples and narratives. So facts and statistics, these are the things of, you know, of, of information. If, if I crack open an encyclopedia, if I had an encyclopedia uh, anymore, uh, this would be what I'd be able to find in there, just the, the largely agreed upon fact around orchids or whatever, uh, the thing that is agreed upon. So if I was doing a speech on childhood obesity, an informative speech on childhood obesity in the United States, a fact for that might be the American Heart Association has reported that an average adult should consume between, at maximum, they don't have to consume, uh, but consume between six to nine teaspoons of sugar a day. That's the recommended amount. Don't go over that. Uh, most Americans are having a, a, at least twice of that. They're having about 22 teaspoons a day of sugar. And American teenagers are coming in at a whopping 34 teaspoons a day. Um, so that's, that's, that's a fact, right? I can deploy that in however I need to if I want to say, oh, this is, a, this is a growing problem and it's specifically affecting America's youth. Well, that's a wonderful piece of evidence that illustrates that particular idea. But it's a fact. It's just it's, it's, it's the result of a study. I can have a statistic that is basically a numerical representation of that. So if I'm doing the speech and I'm doing it in front of a Washington audience, maybe I want to go at it and, and provide a greater sense of locality. So the Washington State Board of Health reports that over 60% of Washington adults are either overweight or obese. Okay, that's a statistic. Right? That, that's a numerical representation of fact. It gives people a sense of how where obesity sits within the larger whole of this particular state. Now, testimony is really good in an informative speech because what you're able to do with testimony is basically borrow the credibility of somebody else. Um, so once again, if I'm talking about obesity, I would say, well, in 2003, the then uh, Surgeon General, uh, Richard uh, Carmona, stated to Congress that the U.S. has an epidemic of childhood obesity. 
So I'm asking, you know, I, the, the audience can hear that and go, oh, well, that's not just Matt saying that we've got an epidemic of childhood obesity. It's someone who knows significantly more than him, uh, the attorney general. Uh, the attorney general. Maybe he thinks that too, the surgeon general. Um, so I'm able to sort of borrow somebody else's credibility on this issue. I'm sort of saying to you, here's what experts have reported on this issue. And then finally, examples and narratives. And, and, and in the obesity one, I would be able to provide stories or narratives or some of the challenges that people face with severe obesity. So those examples and narratives are really providing a, a human face or a way of understanding that issue in a, in, a, in a much more tangible way. We'll return to the power of narrative and story when we get into the persuasive speech, because that's, that's really where those stories can have a, have a significant impact. So if those are the types of details and evidence, which ones should you include? Well, one key thing to think about is aim for diversity. If you just have statistics in your informative speech, that might be pretty dry. If it's nothing but narratives and examples, well, then the question is how, how generalizable is the knowledge that you're talking about? You know, is this merely anecdotal? Is this merely your experience? Some cases that might be fine. Uh, other cases it might be inappropriate. So you want to be able to have a, a, a nice diversity of evidence type, of detail type. A and narratives and examples are so good at helping us understand and identify with the topic. So at the end of this video lecture, when you're on that course page, so this is what we're in. We're in week five. Uh, thank you. Some of the guy behind the camera is like, ah. I don't know if he's asking for a high five. I'm not going to do it now, but later. Help me remember. Uh, so if we've got, uh, if we're on week five, at the end of this video, there'll be an embedded, embedded uh, uh, clip. And I think uh, Hans Rosling is a really good example of this. So he's someone who deals with statistics, but the one that I really like as an illustration of this idea is he's talking about energy use and water consumption, but he'll talk to the statistics, and then he jumps right over to an example, sometimes hypothetical, sometimes real. But there's this real good blend of here's some statistics, but here's what, that st here's what those statistics on a global scale look like for the individual. And boy, being able to have that type of diversity is really good for an informative speech. So that's the type of evidence there is and what you should be aiming for in terms of diversity. But you want to make sure you're keeping the details in their proper place. Remember in the impromptu, we wanted to make sure that support didn't overtake the claim. So too here, we want to make sure that the details don't get away from what they're supposed to be doing. We want the audience to remember our ideas, our meaning, our clarification. So don't wander off in a discussion of the detail at the expense of the idea, right? Because the idea is what it's there for. The detail's there to help us better understand the idea. So keep the emphasis on that. Once again, I think this is the benefit of an outline structure, is I'm kind of remembering, here's the key theme I want people to understand. Here's the detail that gets me there. But I want to make sure that I'm staying focused on that key theme. So as it comes to that, summarize that, those details to get at the core idea. Um, you know, really go through them with an eye to reinforcing that, that, I, that core idea, that claim. And at this point in the writing process, the composing process of your speech, it's really good to go back and look at, maybe you threw some detail in under a point and it made sense at the time, but go back and make sure that those details, make sure that that evidence is doing what you say it's doing. So I want to show you an example here. Uh, this is from an old student speech uh, that I adapted for this purpose, but um, this is the sort of stuff I'll see a lot of the time. So people find evidence. they sort of put it somewhere in their outline, they kind of forget about why they put it there, and then they write the speech around it. And it ends up being that the key idea and the detail actually don't have a lot in common. So if you, we'll go ahead and take a look at this. Um, so the, um, in discussing differential tuition, so a number of universities at the, in the United States have toyed with the idea of differential tuition. So some majoring in some areas will cost more than other areas, right? So the sciences are money hogs, man, it costs a lot to educate a, you know, an engineer 
uh, you know, an English major, they're, they're, they're cheap to educate. They, they need books and a space, but they don't need a lab. So, um, so there's been some discussion. There's some universities that look at charging different rates for different majors. So in a, a, a discussion about differential tuition, this is what I come across. So this person is saying, if differential tuition is implemented, students may tend to choose other universities. So we got a consequential claim here. If X, then Y. And so there's what he has for the, for the detail and the evidence. Competing programs at other institutions could obtain a price advantage. Last year, this is the detail part, last year the legislature recommended that all four-year public higher education institutions increase resident undergraduate tuition by 16%. But the UW chose to increase it by 20%. And cites a source there. If the UW has adopted this policy, the tuition would be much higher than other public universities. Students may tend to choose other public universities, therefore leading to negative impacts on school rankings. That evidence, that detail, just says that all the detail proves, it demonstrates, is that the UW said that uh, the, the UW raised the tuition four percentage points more than was recommended. That is all that evidence proves. That's all that evidence illustrates. It does not, that piece of detail does not demonstrate that if differential tuition is implemented, students may tend to choose other universities. It doesn't do that. Uh, at some point in the drafting of this, that evidence was slotted in there. It was kind of forgotten about. And then they ended up writing a point around a piece of evidence that doesn't really do what they say it's doing. So now is the time to really go back and look at that outline that you have and make sure that what you say that evidence is doing is actually what you're doing. Now, in performing the speech iteratively by standing up there and talking through it, you should be listening for it uh, and make sure that there is that relationship. So this lecture was sort of about getting all the final details in place. Once again, where we are in the week, we came up with ideas, we moved into arrangement, we revised our arrangement, we started thinking more about the details used to really illustrate those ideas. Um, and so now what I want you to do is go back and, and check on your details. Uh, could you add more diversity in terms of the types of evidence and details that you're presenting? If you can, put in some more examples probably. Uh, but also you're looking at these changes, you're looking to make sure that everything's kind of on the same page when it's on the same page. Uh, that that detail does in fact relate to the next level up that it's supposedly illustrating. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about tying all of this week's material together, how you're getting into elaborating detail and relating it back to claim.